Good morning or evening. <laughs> this is uh, using the corner to corner design, only starting around straight, coming in strips around the hat. Makes a nice rich design. This is actually the third piece in the project. I tend to make my hats long. Very long. <laughs> they can really cover you up when it's snowing. I make I make mine to give away for where it's really cold. But there's so many different ways to wear them. They're rolled up and like a little beanie type thing. Get a little cocky with it. Get a little Roaring Twenties action there. Just, I think uh, you'll find that this is a very easy hat to make. I did a little change up on the pattern. I added um, a modified puff stitch in here. Three rows worth. One, two, three. It's not real obvious. It just adds some texture to the hat. This is the um, third in the series for these this type of design. I made the scarf to go with it. And before that, I made the um, infinity scarf. And if you notice the puff stitches on the edge of this, that's a normal puff stitch. And I don't really care for them that much, but I did it anyway. It gives a nice softer edge. Yesterday morning when I was finishing this one, I discovered these puff stitches and I like them because you don't have on either side inside or outside you don't have those uh, lines I don't care for these lines they stick out the catch on things so now I'm probably going to have to take the whole outside off of this and replace it with the uh, new puff stitches anyway so um, this was the first video for, for this stitch. The long scarf was the second. And the hat was the water jump. It went so fast yesterday. Okay, let's get started. Oh, one more thing. Um, this is all that's left of two 7 ounce skeins of Red Heart Real Teal. That's it. Two skeins for all three of these projects. And um, this is a uh, four foot long, eight inch wide eternity scarf. Six feet long and six inch wide regular scarf. And the hat, nine inches long, about uh, finish size about seven inches in diameter about 22 23 inches in diameter so you can see you can make all three of those with if you get it on sale like I do probably less than six dollars that's swept okay let's get started I hope you enjoy this project I'm going to start my hat with a magic circle I use a double magic circle because I'm too stupid to use a single one. I always get messed up. Comes over the back. Bring it around two fingers. That's a single magic circle. Bring it around again. That's a double magic circle. Hold it here. Hold it here. And just like that. And when I do it with a single magic circle, this thing ends up twisting around. I end up getting this going every which way. Double works better for me. I never have to worry about it coming out. 
Now, this cap is going to start with a radial of 12. And it's going to be a radial of 12 double crochets. So I'm going to chain two, yarn over through two, through two, yarn over, bring it up, through two, through two. And I'm going to keep doing that until I have 12 posts on my ring. 11 and 12. Now you notice I counted the original chain 3 up as one of my posts. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, if you notice when I did this, I also went over my tail. So my tail is actually being covered three times. You don't ever have to worry about this puppy coming out. Now to do a double, you pull the tail a little bit. And you see which one of these came down? This goes around here. This goes around and comes out in this loop. So the same end that your loose end comes out, you pull this loop till your bottom one is done. When you take and you pull your loose end, and you've got three wraps of thread around there, and you never have to worry about it. And cut right to the chase and lop off my tail. No worries. And I'm going to slip stitch into the top here. Okay. Now, with all um, hats, <coughs> mats, pot cleaners, uh, pot holders, anything that you use that's round and flat. It's the same pattern every time. You start with your stitches, original stitches, and you're going to put two in each one. Now, see this right here? See where it's coming out? You can either use this stitch or you can use this stitch but you can't use both stitches when you're going to do your double. The best thing to do is this thing where it's barring around your chain. That is the stitch that goes with that post. That is the stitch that goes with that post. That is the stitch that goes with that post. See this? So if you pull it like this and you see this here, this is not a stitch. Don't ever get confused that that's a stitch. You can tell the post, cross stitch, the post. See there? Now, this I'm going to come back here and I'll be doing my doubles every time with my beginning chain. All the way up we'll be doing double at some point and this is where it's going to be. This will always be where the first stitch is. This will always be considered the last stitch the second part of the V. Okay. So we're going to start out with two V's in each stitch. Whoops. A whole stitch. There we go. So double and double. Going over. Stick it in the hole. Bring up a loop. Through two loops. Through two loops. And do it again on the same stitch. That's four. 
Come to the third stitch. I'm going to do two more. And that makes six. And you do the same all the way around until you get to the end and you have 12. And this is 21. 22. And I'm right back here at this stitch. I'm going to do 23 right in that stitch. And this here is my last one, 24, part of the V. So I'm going to slip stitch right into the top of that. Oops. There we go. Now I have 24 stitches around. Now we're going to chain one, two, and this is going to be the last stitch of my round. The one next to it is going to be the first. I will end in a V over this V. So I have, this is one, you have one in each, one stitch for each spoke. Row two, you have two stitches for each spoke. Three. Row three, you have three stitches in each spoke. So we're going to do one, and two, three. We're going to do two in the next stitch. So we're going to two, and three, into the next stitch. Then one, and two, three, into the next stitch. So how many are we counting? One, two, three, must be one, two, three. One, Two, three in the next stitch. Well, I know I counted right. So here's a V. I have one stitch left here for my single. And this is going to be part of my V, so I put my last stitch in here. And this is the other half of the V. Slip stitch. And there's my third row. Now, fourth row, we did one each here, two each here, three each here. Now we're doing four. Again, see here the see the V here with this coming out of it? And the V here, this will have a V coming out of this. So this first, this chain up will be actually my last stitch of the round. We'll chain up three, come into the very next stitch, and I'm going to do one, go into the next stitch, that's two, and we need four. So the next stitch is going to be three, four. And one, two, and three, four. And each V will be in the top of each V, will be in the top of each V as you go around. And don't worry about it being wonky when you get out here with straight sides. It will have, uh, you don't have that as much with the 12. And it totally disappears when you start your rounds. So go ahead and complete this round. We have one, two, three, four. And we have four in each set. One, two, three, four. Okay. Come back around again. 
put my one here, put my two here, and right in, see where the bar is? Right under the bar. Put the first part of my V, this one's the second part of my V. Come right here into top of the stitch. I like to have two stitches, two threads together there. Makes it stronger. Got round four done. Five, same difference. We're going to have five in each set. So we're going to chain one, two, three, and starting with the first stitch after our chain, one, two, three, and four, five. And one, two, three, get my glasses caught up in my head, I do. My glasses are caught up in my yarn. Okay, so now I stopped because my glasses got caught up. So where am I? Here's my last V and my last V. One, two, three. Here's my next V. And this is where four, five goes. See, if you try to skip around and avoid the Vs, um, it makes it a lot harder if you get lost to stop and look back at it. So you go along, go around and do your one, two, three, four, five, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, now, here's my last V, one, two, three. Four, five goes in here. You can see I'm right on the top of my last V. One, two, three, and this is the stitch my four or five goes into. So I go under the bar, into the stitch. That's my four. My first chain here is my five. Slip stitch there. Now at this point I have a six and a half inch diameter top. Nearly six and a half inches. Pretty close. And that's pretty good size for a, for a hat for a woman. Um, you can go, if you need it a little bit bigger, you can go a half double crochet around doing one, two, three, four, five, six. Doing two in each V and you'll have six in each set. You have one in each set, two in each set, three, four, five in each set. If you go another row, it'll be six in each set. I'm going to stop here. And uh, I want to turn and start going down straight. And to start that, I'm going to do one row of single crochet. And I'm going to do it through these back two stitches here. See, here's the stitches at the top of your row. If you do it through both of these, you'll have a regular single crochet. It'll tend to round your edge down and make you start going down. Back here you have these two stitches like an extended V. If I go through these two stitches, my hat will make a much sharper turn down. And I'll have this top stitch here as kind of a frame for the top. So, chain one. Come on, camera. 
Come on. Get with it. There we go. Gotta go through these back two stitches. Pull up a loop. Go through these back two stitches. Out of there. Those two stitches. Pull up a loop. Do the single. Go through those back two stitches. Pull up a loop. Just like that. All the way around. When you get a little ways around, you're going to see how it's ready to pull down. You have to get a big enough arc of it done that it's pulling in on itself. And there's no reason why you can't do... See there? A uh, half double if you wanted. This is going to be the side of your cap. So you continue that around. I'll uh, meet you back when we're ready to start our pattern. Just like that. Okay. I've come back around. Here's the bar that my first stitch came out of. I'm not doing a V this time. So I don't need to put a stitch in here. I just need to go in the top and make my slip stitch. See how that cut that? You might remember that little idea if you're making a little um, container for the desk or your dresser. It's a nice edge to it. Okay, now we're going to start the stitch. So to begin with, we're going to come up one, two, three, yarn over. Now this stitch, this chain belongs to this stitch. This chain belongs to this stitch with the bar here. See that? So this is our next stitch. This is not the stitch that our chain belongs to. I'm going to come down to that next stitch this is and I'm going to make a double start. crochet. I'm going to come down in the next stitch and make a half double. In the next stitch I make a single. In the next stitch, slip stitch. See there? And now I go one, two, three, and start all over again. Not in the same stitch I slip stitch. In the next one, I do my double, then my half double, then my single, and back to the slip stitch. Chain one, two, three. Double, half double, single, slip stitch, one, two, three. And that's what we're starting here. We'll be growing our squares off of these sides here. I'll meet you back around. Almost back around. Oops. And double, half double. Let's 
single slip stitch. It should be double, half double, single slip stitch. So I did something right. One, two, three. Now, what if I had didn't have enough here? What if I didn't have enough? Instead of having one, two, three, I only had two. Then I would go back into this one for my double. I'd use that as my third. What if I had four here? Then I would combine two of these, probably the last two, and turn them into three. So I have my double and my half double and my single and right into the base here my slip stitch. <laughs> Looks kind of like a bottle cap, doesn't it? Now when you're doing it in the round, all you need is sets of four. When you're doing it straight like we did for the scarf, you need sets of four plus one. Because your sets are the slip stitch, double, half double, single. And then you end with a slip stitch. Since slip stitch is both your first and your last and you have to end with it, that becomes your fifth one that you have to add on. So it sets a four plus one for straight. In the round, you don't need that because here's one, two, three, four. Slip stitch is one, two, three, four. Slip stitch is one, two, three, four on a round. Because I stopped at 60, I have 15 around. Okay, now, one thing we want to do with the hat is we want to reverse. And we're going to go, so we reversed it. Here's the one where the stitches come out like this. See there? You have your bar that you chained up, your double your half double, your single. We're going to slip stitch once between the single and the half double, twice, once between the half double and the double, and then we're going to go right down in here into this bar and do a third slip stitch. Just like that. See that? One, two, three. Now we're going to put three more half double, three half double crochets in this hole. One, two, and three. And come up here in this bar and slip stitch. One, two, three, and one double crochet, two double crochets, and three double crochets. Come up in the bar and slip stitch. Chain one, two, three, continue on around, and it's going to look like this. You have your triangles and you have your squares going off your triangles. Okay, you continue on around and I'll meet you back here. Coming up on the end of the row, slip stitch into here, chain three, and one, two, We have three double crochets. Now right here, this one went into the base where you slip stitched before 
That's where you're going to slip stitch again. Now you have a full circle of your squares coming out at an angle. Now you're going to reverse back to the outside again. And you're going to do a slip stitch in the first stitch. A slip stitch in the second stitch. Don't make them really tight. And you're going to slip stitch into the bar right here. And you're ready to go the other direction. The chain three and three double crochets. Just like that. Now, if you get here and you're not sure where to go, you slip stitched into here and you say, do I slip stitch up here? No, because then you don't have a bar to put your square in. So when you slip stitch here, you say, where's my bar? Here's my bar, but I can't go this way because I'd have to start from here to go that way. So you slip stitch up and then here's your bar and you know that you have to go in the other direction. So you flip it over, you do your slip stitch up, and from there on, you keep the squares going in the other direction. Slip stitching into each bar, chain three, and three, three double crochets. My cat stopped them to me again. Okay, now you go around this row and I'll meet you back at the end. I'm almost to the end of this row and I wanted to stop and tell you something, show you something, give you another option. Now this is just the plain double crochets, but what if you were to substitute a puff stitch. Now look what you have. You could do the puff stitch every row, every other row, every three or four stitches around just to give it a change up. See there? It makes it thicker and warmer. Like that. But you don't want to do a regular puff stitch. Because those have those real long uh, stringy edges on them and they get caught on everything. This is a little secret I learned this morning. Got so excited I had to do a little short video on it. You chain up three anyway because that's going to be the bar that you're going to build your next square on, on the next row. Yarn over and instead of coming down like you use, usually do, you come in through the back, bring up your loop, yarn over, and then you go through the front, bring up your loop, yarn through all, all of them, yarn over, come through the back, bring up a loop, yarn over, come through the front, and loop through all of them. And you do that three times instead of the double crochets. And then you go into your next bar and slip stitch just like normal. Now this gives you a different puff stitch. It's as thick as the puff stitch. It's as tall as the puff stitch. And the back looks just as nice as the front. You don't have, have those big long um, streaks going down the catch on everything. Um, the reason why it works like this is when you do the come in from the back, if you watch carefully, it really twists it. And that's where you get your really long one. So you come in.
from your back like this. And see how it's twisted around here? See there? Just pull it in and twisted it up. Then yarn over. And bring up your front. And yarn through. And it's tied everything up nicely. Oops. Now here's something very strange. You say, well, if, it, if you do one front and one back, then that should work just fine. For some reason, it doesn't. I'll show you. you. Go through the front, bring up a loop, and then go through the back, and bring up a loop. Go through the front, bring up a loop, yarn over, go through the back, bring up a loop. So you're going front first and then back. And slip stitch. And you end up with those long stringy things on the front and the back. So you do it regular, you get the long ones on the back. You do it back first and then front first, you don't get them anywhere. You do it front first and back first and you get a long stringy ones on the front and the back. Now that is just wild. That is wild. But you know, if you like that look, then you know how to get it two-sided, don't you? And if you don't like those at all, you know how to do it without having them on either side. And regular just gives you the uh, bigger, longer ones on the back than the front. So that is something else you can do with your hat. Do a little change up and do the puff stitch around. When you come back around, you use your chain to make your squares. Okay. You can do the same thing with the scarf. You could do a row of regular stitches and then a one or two rows of the puff stitch. And then back. Okay. So again, I'm going to go back to where I started. Okay, I'm back to my beginning again. I'm going to go through here. Slip stitch. and turn one whoops <laughs> oh my slip of the gear here okay one slip stitch and remember don't make them too tight two slip stitches and then slip stitch into your the side of your bar Now I'm going to be having probably eight rows of these. So I'll be having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have two rows regular. If I put a puffy one here, and I use two rows regular here, and a puffy one here, then I'll have a regular one in between. I just might do that. I want to make this whole next row puffy ones, and then a row of regular, and a row of puffy ones, and then two rows of regular. Okay. I just decided that. I kind of like the way that puffy looks. Okay, so now. I'm going to chain one, two, three. Come back. Do my pull up. Come in front. Do my pull up. Pull through all loops on the hook. I keep getting out of camera range. I am so apologetic for that. Yarn over, 
to the back. Pull it up. Yarn over to the front. Pull it up. Yarn over and pull through all. Yarn over. This is the third time. Pull it up. Yarn over. Go through the front. Pull it up. Yarn over through all three. Come right up here and slip stitch. I like that. So that's what I want to do. You can keep on doing regular if you like. Now I have 15 around, uh, 15 of these around. If you went six rows, you'd have 72 stitches. You'd have 18 of these around. I could go one every five if I wanted to make a puff stitch every five. And that'd be like one, two, three, four, five. And the next row I would come down, I'd do a puff stitch in the middle here. And then the next time around, I'd do a puff st stitch in the middle of that. And I could have puff stitches alternating back and forth. With 18, you have the option of doing um, every other stitch if you wanted to. You can do a puff, regular, puff, regular. When you come back on the next row, you do a puff, a uh, regular puff, regular, and your puff stitches will start to track diagonally down your hat. Just, uh, there are so many, 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 many ways that you can change this pattern. Do different layers of colors. You'd switch off and do your puffs in a color, different color. Even if it's just a different slight tone. Like if you were doing a, a dark blue and you do a slightly lighter blue. Or you're doing a purple and you can do a purple variegated. It doesn't have to be, you know, radical like blue to red or green to yellow. Okay, I'm going to do that around. One more time. Chain one, two, three. Come in from behind. Yarn over. Come in from the front. Pull it up. Yarn over and through all the loops. Yarn over. Come in from behind. Pull it up. Yarn over. Come in from the front. Pull it up. Yarn over and through all of them. That's two. Once again, through the back and pull up. Yarn over. Through the front and pull up. Through all of them. And there we go. So I'm going to do that all the way around. And I'll meet you back at the front. If you want to go ahead with the regular stitches, do that. I'm just going to give mine a little change up here. I'm back around. I finished my row of puff stitch. I slip stitch between here just like I always do. I'm going to turn just like always. One slip stitch. Two slip stitch. And slip stitch into the top. And I'm going to use the regular doubles for the next row. I'll do a few and see how my puff stitch looks next to it. If it doesn't look as cool as I thought it would, I'll just undo it. Oh my, I just ran out of yarn. I've got enough to take a look at it now. Well, I'm just disappearing right off screen, aren't I? Okay. i put this right side out. So I'm working on the outside. 
there's my puff stitch. Not as exciting as I thought it would be, but it adds a little extra character to that. So I guess I'll leave it in. As you can see, what we're doing is we're using the chain three that we used to start the puff stitch to build our square up on. And that just leaves the, the three puff clusters. Yeah, I think I'll keep it. A little bit different. Won't match the scarf anymore, but close enough. Okay, since I like that okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to complete the length of my hat down to um, eight of these rows. So I have one, two, three, four. The third one is a puff. The fourth one is regular. The fifth one will be puff. The sixth and seventh will be regular. And then I'll do another one of these triangle stitches and the and the bottom stitch. So, and I'll be back before I get to the triangles. Okay, I got as many rows as I thought I would be using to reach my nine inches, and you can see I haven't I haven't gotten there yet. So I'm going to add I could add probably two more more rows and the edge. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change my little idea in the in the middle here. This is a row of puff stitch. This is a row of puff stitch. And then I did two rows regular. I'm going to take this out and do a, th a third row of puff stitch. Probably better for close around the ears anyway. And then I'll do um, two more rows of regular. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows. Yeah, I finished the main design part of my hat and there's a couple ways you can finish it. I'm going to finish it the way I did here, doing the little triangles on the side and a straight edge. You don't have to. You can go, you can take this right here and just go along and do a slip stitch around, single crochet. You can do a row of the uh, puffy stitches and leave it scalloped like that. There's no reason why you have to have it um, hard edged, straight edged. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now. And just like we finished the uh, scarf with the uh, little triangles that went in the same direction as our stitches here, we're going to be doing that again. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go up the side of this. Up to here. And we're going to do a slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. And right in here double crochet. Then we're going to slip stitch right into the top of this stitch. Right into here. Then we're going to single crochet, half double, double crochet, And slip stitch right into the top of here. See there? And we have a nice straight line. So, let's bring her closer. So we're going to single crochet into the first stitch the end of the first stitch here. 
We're going to half double crochet into the second stitch. We're going to double into the next stitch. And right here, so you have one, two, three, and you have this edge. We're going to capture two threads on that edge. And that's where we're going to slip stitch. Then we're ready to come back and single, half double. I wasn't looking whether I went off camera there or not, so I'll be doing it again. Double. We're going to come right here. We have one, two, three, and we need to slip stitch into here. And we want to try to catch two threads. So, easier said than done sometimes. There we go, two threads. And slip stitch. And there's our rim. We'll be doing a half double crochet or double shape crochet over the top of that. Or we could do um, a puff stitch. I think for the strength of the hat, I will do maybe a half double crochet and a slip stitch to make a good strong edge. So once more, single crochet into the first of these three stitches, half double crochet into the second, double into the third, and slip stitch. And that gives you four stitches just like you started with. You started with a slip stitch, single, half double, double, and back to the slip stitch. The slip stitch was on the top of your chain and that's what you're doing here. You're putting your slip stitch in the top of your chain. So, single, half double, double, And slip stitch. Okay. We'll do that around and meet me back here at the beginning. Back around to the beginning. Here's my one, two, three. This is where my slip stitch was is we go right back into that slip stitch then I'm going to turn it and on the outside yes I'm on the outside and I'm going to be working with the outside for the last one last two I should say because I will do the slip stitch on the outside also so I'm going to chain two and I'm going to put a half double in every stitch. Now this stitch here, I slip stitched into, that is not a stitch. That belongs to this. This here next to it will be my last stitch. If you loosen it up a little bit, you can see that your stitch comes out of that and you'll go into the one before it. Okay? So I'm just going to do a little edge of half double crochet around here. So go ahead and do your row. You can do half doubles or doubles. Or you might not even have done these triangles at all. You might have your little ripple stitch. I would love to see pictures of whatever you guys are doing with this. That's going to be so much fun. Okay, I'll be back around here. I'll see you then. Okay, now I'm back around here. You can see where the first stitch came through this stitch. I just came through this stitch, so I'm going to slip stitch into the top here. And I split some thread naturally. I am so good at splitting thread, you would not believe how expert I am on that subject. Okay, 
Now, I'm going to do a barred slip stitch because it stands up on the edge. It's not as tight as a regular slip stitch and um, it looks nice from both sides. So you take and you chain one to start with. You bring your yarn from the back. You grab your hook, pull your yarn forward. Go into your stitch. Pull your yarn past that little bar you just made and through the loop on your hook. Bring your yarn forward and go through the front of the stitch. Pull a loop up past this little bar and through the yarn on your hook. Just like that. Through the back. Pull it up in front of this bar and through the loop on the hook. You don't have to hold the loop if you don't want to, but it sure is a lot easier because you can go through like that, pull it up, twist it around, twist it around, and you get the same effect. But it's just much easier to grab it when you go down. When you go down your hole, you're pushing your, your feed line right there, so you might as well just hold it. Pull your loop through and through. See how fast that is? I made this up last year and I loved it. I've used it quite a bit in things I make. Some of the things I show you guys how to make. Just like that. Okay. Now this is not as stretchy as a single crochet. It's not as tight as a slip stitch. Look at this stitch. It stands up. It has a nice look from the back. It stands up straight. has a nice look from the front. So if you want to roll up your corner, roll up your cuff like this, you don't have an ugly edge here. So the barge slip stitch is a real nice one to have. And it's also good if you have two pieces that you want to connect because you have your good standing upright edge here that you can sew together. So you go ahead and finish your edge and sew in your ends and you will be done. I have a pretty little hat. And the scarf. See, I learned some stuff on the hat that I wish I'd done on the scarf now. And worse than that, here's the infinity scarf I made. And I did the puff stitch, stitch edge. And this morning I learned how to make a puff stitch where I wouldn't have to have all of these. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to find the beginning of this, undo it, and do the puff stitch the way I learned this morning. And I'll have a real nice puff stitch like these guys around the edge. And all three of these made uh, made from two eight ounce skeins, seven ounce skeins. I have this left over. I won't have all that left over when I finish my um, slip stitch, 
but pretty close. Just a little bit left over, not much waste. I can always make a few centers of grannies with it. So I have a 8 inch wide, 4 foot long eternity scarf plus a 6 foot long, 6 inch wide corner to corner straight scarf and a 9 inch long Uh, 7 inch diameter because from here to here it's it's 7 inches across here. It was 6 and a half here and we added the little single around here by 9 inches. There'll be plenty of room to turn it up and wear it in various fashions which I'll probably show when I show the introduction. And all those off of two Seven ounce schemes of Red Heart Super Saver Real Teal. And I believe I even got them on sale for like $269, $279 a scheme. So for less than $6, I got all of these. Okay, I hope you enjoyed crocheting along with me. I hope you made something really cool. And I really, really would like it if you would share it with me send me a picture or a, a note of what you did. I enjoy crocheting with you. Have fun crocheting.